My first encounter with Agnes Varda is perhaps one of the most stereotypically French premises for a movie. A delicate, idyllic, and largely positive portrait of infidelity? Most of the time in these stories, the man is discontented at his domestic married life. But our protagonist, Francois, Jean-Claude Drouot, is living in near-perfect bliss. His wife is faithful and nurturing. His children are sweet and beautiful. He gets along well with his extended family and in-laws. And he finds fulfillment in his career as a carpenter. There is no void in his life that an extramarital affair fills. And his mistress is just more added happiness, never taking away any of his love for his family. Varda and production designer Hubert Malou characterize the women by the clothes and the environments they inhabit. We see the wife, Therese, played by Drouot's actual wife, Claire, in rustic tableau, a picnic in the park, softly lit by the springtime sun. Her dress patterned in the film's motif of sunflowers, a modest and quaint house colored in warm pastels. In the adjoining garden, also full of sunflowers, loomed over by towering apartment blocks. Those buildings are as modern as the mod fashion and Jackie Kennedy haircut of the mistress Amelie. Her apartment is sleek and rectangular. Its walls are painted a clinical white and adorned with portraiture of popular actors. Therese is a dressmaker, a craft defined by the two pillars of traditional womanhood, matrimony and maternity. Meanwhile, Amelie is a service worker who sits at the very crossroads of the male-dominated worlds of business and government, the post office. In any other movie, this would be framed as a conflict between the traditional versus the modern, or the rustic versus the urban. But for Francois, they're all equal parts of who he is and what he desires as a man. And that applies to a lot of men, including myself. One who has it all is both rooted in traditional mores of family and honest blue-collar work, and forward-thinking in terms of culture and sexuality. Therese and Amelie enrich both sides of that psyche. Then a tragic turn in the final act transforms the film from a fairly easygoing dual romance to something more challenging, even provocative. Therese's initial reaction to her husband's admission of the affair isn't surprising considering the dreamy tone of the film. She accepts his explanation of his co-equal affection, and the couple make love under a tree flitting in the whistling breeze. However, when Francois awakes, Therese is no longer there. He and his children desperately search the park, only to find her drowned corpse recovered from a nearby pond after what is implied to be a suicide. Both Francois and we as an audience have been so drawn into his pursuit of hedonistic happiness that we fail to consider the happiness of the faithful wife and how infidelity can shatter that happiness once the truth is revealed. In essence, the conflict is not tradition versus the modern, but rather the male ego and its tendency to consume women, even with the best of intentions. It's the very final scene where Varda uses the warm glow of the park and the music of Mozart to leave a compelling ambiguity that has lingered on in my mind. After a period of mourning, Francois asks Amelie if she would wish to be with him and raise his children. She says yes, and the movie plays out to an idyllic tableau where the former mistress, now wearing a floral dress, leads the blissful kids out to a picnic. Are we to take this at face value as an unequivocally happy ending? Life has to go on, after all, and from a utilitarian perspective, Amelie becoming wife and stepmother maximizes happiness for everyone out of truly tragic circumstances. Yet you can't help but feel that despite Francois's immense love for her, Therese's role as mother and primary partner is, if not disposable, interchangeable. Women are just not afforded that same kind of sexual liberty as men. Even in the opening credits, Claire Drew is not credited by her full name, but rather underneath her husband as his wife, Claire, and their children. 
From the very beginning, Varda is lampshading entrenched gender roles. What will happen to Amelie once Francois inevitably deems his love too great for one woman and finds someone to fill the role of the exciting and adventurous mistress? It's a patriarchal cycle that underlies a conundrum that would only become more poignant as the sexual revolution blossomed.